Hello and welcome to this podcast about chaos and clues. If you're looking at this video, I guess you're starting out with dermatoscopy, but you already know that it renders the surface of the skin translucent and lets you have more insight into the morphology of skin lesions. In clinical practice, you might have these kind of patients and do have a problem to look at all the lesions. And one reason for this problem might be that you have been taught, for example, the ABCD rule or the seven point checklist in the lectures. And even though they are very clever algorithms and perform very well in clinical studies, they do have a problem in clinical practice. So we have, when you have these kind of patients and have a lesion, you have to do a very complicated calculation. But you don't only have to do it for one lesion, but you have to do it for a lot of lesions. And when you have to do this, you will never finish just one patient in a day. And when you just look at one lesion, of course you want to know the diagnosis. But what you really want to know in that second is the decision whether you have to cut it out or you can leave it on the patient. And the algorithm chaos and clues that I will show you just deals with the question do I have to cut it out or can I leave it on the patient? And it has two steps. The first one is you look for chaos. If you don't see it, you can leave the lesion. And only if you see that the lesion is chaotic, you look for certain morphologic clues and if they are present, you biopsy the lesion. And I'll go through the two steps in the next minutes. So the first one is, is the lesion chaotic? And there are many ways that a lesion cannot be chaotic. And you have to keep in mind that you are regarding biology. So, of course, when you say something that is not chaotic has to be symmetric, you should not mean geometric or architectural symmetry. So, a biologic lesion can look a little bit asymmetric but still is not chaotic to our eye. So when you translate this to true lesions, this is what you will find. The lesion on the left is not really chaotic. Of course, it has an asymmetric outline, but the lesion itself is composed of just one pattern and just one color. So this is not chaotic. On the right-hand side, you have a melanoma, and this is chaotic. It has multiple colors that are asymmetric. It has multiple patterns that are asymmetric. So this is chaotic. And you will already recognize that this is a very easy decision. The human eye is already trained to recognize a break in the pattern of biologic symmetry. So in the next lesions, I will just show you what is chaos and what is not. So this is no chaos. This is a bit asymmetric, but it's not chaotic. This is still not chaotic. Also, this here is not chaotic. And also, this lesion, very symmetric, not chaotic. And here, you immediately recognize that here is a break in the pattern. You see that this lesion is chaotic, even if you cannot describe why it is chaotic. Of course, when you look closer, you have an asymmetric distribution of structure and color and by that it is chaotic. But you don't really have to describe why it is chaotic, you already recognize it by heart. Sometimes it is not that easy. We have lesions that are a little bit symmetric but also a little bit asymmetric. And one helpful approach here is the so-called comparative approach which has been set forth by J.P. Argenziano. And the way it works is when you have one patient, you look at all of the lesions of the patient. And even if they look a little bit asymmetric, you will easily pick the one that is really chaotic. And this approach is really important if you treat patients with multiple atypical nevi. So because all of those pigmented neoplasms in, in these patients look a little bit chaotic. But if you compare them, you will be able to pick the one out that is really the break in the pattern. 
So now you already know the first step of the chaos and clues algorithm. This is very easy. Now, if you see a chaotic lesion, you have to look for certain clues. And these are several of those clues to malignancy and this is a little bit more difficult because you have to remember these clues to malignancy. There is no easy way around it, but the good thing is it is an investment in your future because these clues can also be used in the more powerful pattern analysis. And I will show you just examples of these clues. First, an eccentric structureless area. So here we have an eccentric dark uh, black to blue area and because it is not in, not in the center but eccentric it counts as a clue. Here we have gray structures and any structure that is gray can be a clue to malignancy but especially gray circles on the face are an important clue to melanoma. Here we have black clots and dots that are eccentric and those are clues to melanoma. Here we have lines and they are radial but they are only a segment of the lesion so they do not encompass the whole circumference of the lesion but just a segment and because of this it is a clue to malignancy. Here we have white lines and most commonly they will present as perpendicular white lines and can be seen by polarized dermatoscopy. The critical lines are a more difficult clue to malignancy. So when you look at these lines that are reticular, you will recognize that the lines themselves are thicker than the holes in between. And whenever you see this, this counts as a clue to melanoma. In this non-pigmented lesion, you will see multiple forms of vessels. So here you have dotted vessels, linear vessels, but also serpiginous vessels. And if you have multiple forms of vessels, we call that polymorphous, and this is a clue to melanoma. If you look at aqual skin, the most important pattern you have to recognize is parallel lines that are on the ridges. And to keep it short, the ridges are the broad lines on aqual skin. If you look at chronically sun-damaged skin, one important clue are polygons or angulated lines. And these are lines that are larger than those from reticular lines, but they go around the whole hair follicles. So if you see any of those clues, just one, this is enough to um, decide to biopsy the lesion at hand. And one very nice thing is the clues do not work only for melanoma but all pigmented malignancies of the skin. So here we have a basal cell carcinoma and it has an eccentric structureless area and segmental radial lines. Here we have a chaotic lesion with white lines and blue structures. So we cut it out and this is a basal cell carcinoma. And again, a chaotic lesion with white lines and gray structures, and this is a basal cell carcinoma. Three important points when you use the chaos and close algorithm. First are seborrheic keratoses. So you might be familiar with the presentation of seborrheic keratoses as you see them above. But very commonly, seborrheic keratoses can be chaotic in dermatoscopy. Sadly, there is no very easy golden rule to say that something is a seborrheic keratosis, but you have to gain experience in pattern analysis and look for, for example, white dots and clots, yellow clots, or thick curved lines to diagnose something as a seborrheic keratosis, and you will become better as you gain experience in dermatoscopy. This lesion here is not chaotic, but it is on the face, and you see that it has gray circles. And whenever you see gray circles on the face, even though a lesion is not chaotic, you have to think of melanoma. And if you see a lesion that is symmetric, but the patient tells you it has been growing only for a few weeks, 
which was the case in this lesion here, you still have to think of malignancy. So to sum it up, this is the roundup of the chaos and clues algorithm. In the first step, you look for chaos. If there's no chaos, you don't do anything. If there is chaos, you look for certain clues, and if you find one of them, you biopsy the lesion. This algorithm, of course, also has been tested, in this case, in Australian patients, and you, you see that most of malignant lesions can be caught by using this algorithm. But don't trust me. Please try the method yourself and do it in the textbook of your choice. Look at the lesions there and apply the algorithm. And if you're familiar enough with it, use it on your patients. Thank you for listening.